Welcome, everybody. It's time for another Amaz Auto Chess Guide. Man, this one, this one's gonna be a great run, man. This is the fourth guide of the series. Make sure you check out the previous ones if you haven't. But today, we're gonna be talking about statistics and items. Two of the most requested subjects uh, ever, actually, in Auto Chess. So what exactly does that mean? Well, after today's lesson, <laughs> my, 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 uh, you know, my young students, you're going to be answered six questions. Okay. So today, this, this slot, this PowerPoint is going to answer six questions. First question is what exactly does five armor give you? So it's kind of generic. Like what is five armor? What is magic resist? Right. We're going to answer all that those. Secondly, what are diminishing returns? Some things are diminishing returns and some things are not. So we will, um, you know, let you guys know what those are too. Next up, we have how to amplify stats. What items stack and don't stack. When should I equip items? And finally, where should I equip items? Do I split it on all units or do I stack it on one single unit? So basically, all of these questions will be answered. And if you're wondering uh, what any of these are, then, you know, this guy's going to help you out. So of course, we should start with armor, right? Armor is very important in um, auto chess because it is in, built in the Dota chess system. So let's go ahead and give you guys an example of armor first. So let's take Axe. Axe is a base of 5 armor, right? And that basically gives you 23% physical resist. Uh, that's what 5 armor is. If you mouse over the tooltip in Dota, that's exactly what happens. Now, if you equip a chainmail, onto Axe, you get a total of 10 armor. And 10 armor is 37% magic physical resist. And if you equip another chainmail, you get 47% physical resist, right? So as you can see, the more armor you equip, the less physical resist you get. So from here, you get 14%, and from here, you get 10%. Therefore, armor is diminishing returns, right? No, it is not, okay? It's not. Some people think that because this works like this, that armor has diminishing returns. But no, it actually is not, all right? It's actually incorrect. So why is that? Well, let's explore this armor example in another way, okay? Let's talk about effective HP because percentage is a very hard to uh, process. Uh, human minds are not made to process effective HP. Uh, 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 percentage, let's do effective HP instead. So here's another example, okay? Quap has zero armor, Axe has five armor, and a gyro with a chainmail and a playmail is 25 armor. Okay, so let's look at the uh, effective HP. Quap has 1,000 HP. Okay, uh, uh, actually Quap doesn't have 1,000 HP, but we're just setting all these to 1,000 HP for this example, okay? So if Quap is zero armor, uh, it's zero resist, obviously, right? So she will have 1,000 HP, which means that if I do physical 1,000 uh, physical damage to her, then she would die in 1,000 attack. That's fairly obvious. Let's look at Axe. So Axe, like we said before, 5 armor is 23% resist, right? However, if you add 1000 HP with 23% resist, you actually get 1300 HP. Um, it's kind of weird. You do not get 1230 because in order to deal, in order to kill 1000 HP unit, you need to deal 1300 damage to it because 1300 damage after 23%, it's 1,000. This is a concept that's a little bit hard to grasp at first, but if you do, if you do a very easy, um, it's a very easy math, right? If I, can, if I deal 1,300 damage and it's reduced by 23%, so if I um, go ahead and drag this on here, 1,300, right? And that's 70, 77%. That's 1,000-ish, right? It's basically ish. So as you can see, you actually get a little bit more than you bargained for. And if we look at the Gyro example, if Gyro is 1,000 health and 25 armor is 60% magic resist, you actually get 2,500 HP. So as you can see for this very, very easy example, oh, sorry, five armor literally equals 30% health. Uh, we're gonna look into this a little bit more as an example. For a general idea on EHP, is every five armor you put a unit increases its HP by 30% max HP. That's actually the, it's it's a little bit, not exactly 30%, it's a little bit less than 30%, but 
But in general, this rule is going to work. So armor has no diminishing returns. Anybody who tells you armor has diminishing returns doesn't really understand the uh, formula behind it, right? Uh, so you can stack armor on one unit and you'll be fine, right? Uh, because, well, if you stack armor on your tank, for example, and he has a lot of HP, then you're getting more mileage out of the armor than, for example, spreading out armor to everybody. Uh, magic resist is a little bit harder. Uh, magic resist is, uh, you know, it, it reduces a percentage damage taken, right? So, for example, uh, 1,000 HP with 15% magic resist is basically 1,000 divided by 85% because you're taking 85% damage instead which gives you a little bit more than you bargain for as well uh all you need to know if you uh do, you know don't really want to do the equation stuff is that mr also doesn't have to measure turns magic resist actually is inverted it actually has um amplified returns so the more um the more magic resist you have a unit the more benefit you actually get so it's even better than armor but that's just min-maxing. It, 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 you don't have to worry about this too much. Plus, you can't actually stack armor on a unit that effectively. There's only Cloak and Hood of Defiance, right? So you don't have to worry about it too much. But once again, Magic Resist does also not have... Um, also doesn't have uh, Diminishing Returns. So let's go ahead and actually talk about Diminishing Returns because we keep on mentioning uh, this term. But basically, Diminishing Returns is when the same copy of an item is put on the same unit and they become less effective, then they have diminishing returns. If you go and have a smoothie, okay? The first mango smoothie you have, it tastes so good, right? It's like so yummy. But then the second mango smoothie you have doesn't taste as good because you already have a first one. You already know what it tastes like. And then the third one is basically you just don't want to drink it anymore, right? So that's basically diminishing returns. If you have more of something and it becomes worse the more you get, then it's bad. So for example, armor doesn't have diminishing returns, right? Because the more you have it, it's still fine. The, f the first five armor is as effective as the next five armor, and it's the same as the next five armor. So, so armor is one of the um, things that do not have this. So it's even. So let's go ahead and drag our pen out and put uh, and draw even to this. So this is even, okay? Next up, we have Magic Resist. As we know, Magic Resist is actually better the more you get. So it's not actually even, it's actually an increase. All right, so this is actually bigger. Okay, so the arrow pointing up. Armor is even, right? Uh, next up, we have Percentage Chance to Hit. Okay, so if you have two Maelstroms on a unit, what happens? Is that diminishing returns? So if you have a Maelstrom, it is 25% like to launch a electricity, right? If you have two of them, then, you know, 25% plus 25%, right? Uh, which is actually a little bit weird because uh, to calculate percentages like that, you have to calculate the transition chance of it missing. So, uh, you know, so it'll be like the full was one minus, uh, you know, 75%. Uh, so this is, this is the chances of it missing. Uh, yeah, of it missing. And then it had to miss again. So this is the formula for um, this is the formula for two maelstroms. Uh, how how often it hits? So if we just do a, a, some very basic math, we'll see that this equals seven out of sixteen, right? Uh, seven out of sixteen is about pu punch this in. Uh, it's about forty three percent. So you get forty three percent here, right? And then for one Maelstrom, you get 25%. So one is 25, and then two is 43. This is actually a definition of diminishing returns because the first one gives you 25%, and the second one only gives a plus 18%, right? So this is less effective as it goes along. And you might wonder, hey, Amaz, why is that? Why is it that percentage hit is a diminishing returns and when armor isn't? That's because it cannot proc twice. When you Maelstrom a target, there is no way on one basic attack to launch a Maelstrom twice. That's why this happens. When you get hit by armor, both the five armors will work, right? And if you get hit by spell, both magic resists will work. So as you can see in this example, uh, percentage hit is actually has diminishing returns. So I put down downwards arrows to this. So it actually doesn't work.
what about debuffs? Debuffs are actually, uh, well, they don't have diminishing returns because it's you're debuffing your target, right? So if you have undead bonus and you have a blightstone, it's actually fine because negative armor is the same as positive armor, right? So this is also ev this is also even. Evasion. Elf's evasion. So a percentage chance on hit to dodge an attack, right? Same thing with percentage hit. You cannot dodge an attack twice. Dodge an attack twice doesn't, doesn't you know, uh, mitigate more damage. So uh, elves do have uh, diminishing returns. Uh, and then let's go ahead and get rid of the rest. Uh, Assassin's crit also has diminishing returns because you cannot crit twice. You cannot crit three times. So that's also, uh, it doesn't stack. Uh, plus damage, by definition, uh, the more plus damage you have, they, they, they all work with each other, right? Uh, same as equipping like two blades of attack on a single unit. It, it, they, they both work the same, so that's also even. And then the final stat is magic resist, which is effectively the same as magic resist, right? So it actually has double it, it's the, uh, amplifying returns, so it's actually better. The more negative magic is, the better. That's why six mages is miles better than uh, three mages. Why do you need to know all this? Well, you want to know this because you want to know the mechanics behind the game engine, right? This is more of an advanced guide. So, uh, you know, all you need to take away from this is that percentage hit and evasion and crit, like things that don't happen twice, like things that cannot happen twice are a bit less effective. And things that are stack well with each other is fine. So all this tells you is that you know, just, it's okay to stack stuff. It's okay to stack armor, it's okay to stack range resist. It might not be okay to stack these things. Almost to the next one, let's erase all this. So because we have this knowledge now, we can talk about amplifying stats, which is actually very important. When you amplify stats, you're basically mixing two bonuses that will help each other out and make it better than it is. Uh, let's use the mango smoothie example, okay? So if you have a mango smoothie, that's fine. If you have a chocolate cake, that's fine. But if you have both a mango smoothie and a chocolate cake, they basically help each other out. Because if you eat a chocolate cake, you, you, you get kind of thirsty. And then you have the mango smoothie with it, and they get increased benefit. So having both of them together, you get more value. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's basically what we're trying to look for amplifying stats. The first example is a very, very simple. It's negative armor and plus crit percent chance, okay? So when your opponent takes more damage and you have units that can crit, the crit can deal even more damage. Does that make sense, right? So negative armor and plus crit percent chance is an, an example of amplifying stats. That's why when you have uh, assassins and you have uh, undead, it's actually better than the sum of its parts. Another very easy example is warriors and orcs, right? When you have more HP and you have more armor, the increased HP also benefits from the increased armor. So that's why they help each other out. And the final example is plus percent base damage and plus base damage, which comes from beasts and hunters. So if you ever manage to make a uh, roster of beasts and hunters, you get an extra perk on your hunters. They deal even more damage than they're supposed to. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking for. So in auto chess, if you want to make, uh, this, this should always be going on in your head. How do I amplify two tribes to work with each other, right? These are the three examples. There's, de there's definitely more examples, uh, but and, and also of items as well. But uh, you get my point. Okay. So now that that's over with, uh, let's go ahead and analyze every single item in the game, okay? So first of all, we have basic items, all right? Basic aggressive items, just you know, give, they give you damage, they just increase your throughput. And these are really good on DPSers with high attack speeds or modifiers, such as, um, you know, Troll Warlord, right? Troll Warlord, the, when he attacks, he attacks faster, he attacks faster. So attack speed, right? If he attacks really fast, then the damage item gets better because you're using more of it, right? Amplifying stats. Uh, these are also really good with heroes with game warping ults uh, because, uh, because if they attack more, they can generate more mana, which means they can ult faster. So it's not, it's, it's not uh, abnormal. Like it's very, very common to see a Medusa of a broadsword for that example. And these are your aggressive items, right? You have Blaze of Attack, you have Broadsword, Demon Edge, Javelin, uh, these are all um, damage items. Mithril Hammer is also a damage item. Sacred Relic is also a damage item. Hyperstone 
and Cordyceps increases your attack speed. And then Morbid Mask is actually secretly an aggressive item because you want to put it on a unit that has a very high space damage for the lifesteal. And this also only makes Massive Madness. This is the only component for it. And Massive Madness is a very aggressive item, right? So we put this in under aggressive. So what are what are these good at? Like I said, is they're really good at Medusa because you can charge your ulti fast. Really, you can double dip on SF because not only does he deal a lot of damage, right? Because the auto attacks are really high and he's also a demon, so increased benefit. You also want him to ult faster, right? The faster you can ult, the more, the faster you can just delete your enemy's units and then just clean up, right? So really, really strong. Luna, one of the modifiers, like I said, because her bounce, uh, her glaze bounce around. So the more base damage uh, he, she has, or the more total attack he, she has, uh, the more damage she can deal. Uh, Lich is an example of game warping ult. And Wind Ranger, very fast attack speed, and also you can charge your LT really fast. So these are basically where you want to put these guys, uh, items on, uh, as as a few examples. Defensive items are for your frontline tanks for increased living time. So put armor on your tanks; they live longer. So you know if they live longer, then your DPS can do more damage, right? Because your your team just lives longer. You can also use defensive items to uh, prevent your backlines from just getting glass cannoned out, right? So for example, like uh, SF is a very good example. SF just dies to literally anything. So if you can put some defensive items on him, uh, then, you know, he might live long enough such that he can deal more damage. And defensive items come in a couple of forms. They come in the form of armor with chain mail and plate mail. They come in the form of HP regen. Uh, we have ring of regen and ring of health. Uh, there's um, some damage medication on stealth shield. There's some magic resist on hood. Uh, vit Vitality Booster increases max health, and also uh, Reaver does everything, basically. So, like I said, if you can put these on your front line, like Ogre Magi or uh, Timbersaw, then you increase their living time. Uh, Ogre Magi can double dip, by the way, because uh, he, his, uh, his tribe bonus is the Ogre one, right? So if you put a Vitality Booster on it, he actually increases the health on Vitality Booster as well. So, something like that. Uh, good on TB because, you know, he's all you carry, uh, he has Sunder, and if he lives, then you basically win the game. And also good on your squishies, such as like, uh, DP and Disruptor, you don't want them to die fast. Like, if Disruptor dies before he can ult, it's actually terrible, right? So if your Disruptor is getting one shot, then put some defensive items on him. Finally, we have utility items. Whoops, I forgot to animate this. Uh, <laughs> utility items are good. Uh, generally, so that, um, <laughs> I actually forgot to, alright, so, uh, Ed, Ed, uh, Ed is that okay? So, utility items are, uh, are hard to explain, because they're basically everywhere. They apply debuffs, uh, they basically make it so that, um, you know, your enemies kind of, uh, specific enemy units die faster. So, we have, uh, Crown and, um, Voidstone, they increase your mana regen. We have uh, Robe and we have um, Staff. They reduce the target of whatever they hits um, uh, the magic resist. Uh, Ulti Orb is, uh, you know, increase some health. It's kind of a mix of defensive item. Plus, uh, you get increased mana. Uh, Blightstone is actually a utility item because you apply an armor debuff on a unit and um, your whole team gets the benefit. It's not just that unit, right? So Blightstone is more of a utility item. And Mystic Staff is, you know, same thing. Uh, it applies the magic resist and gives you more mana and stuff. So it's best on these units. Okay. There you go. So the animation did quite work. All right. So it's best on units that live a long time. So as you can see, all these units, they kind of like to live on the back line, right? Uh, techies, you want to put some utility items on him because, you know, you want him to kind of ulti off. Like very good ulti orb uh, target. But generally speaking, these are the units that kind of, you know, apply some stuff and also could use the mana regen, right? Like Vino with Voidstone is like, mm, it's like the juiciest... Uh, combo there and such uh, same thing with Kado, right? If Kado usually dies last, so if he holds like stuff like you know a staff, you always know that the staff is going to be like 100% uptime. So now we'll go ahead and talk about the specific items. Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger lets the user teleport to the furthest space with a perpendicular unit, okay? So if your opponent is all at the front, the Blink Dagger will not te teleport the unit all the way to the back, it'll just teleport it in the same role as enemy unit. Uh, it doesn't give any stats. 
So it's best on a unit that can take advantage of this fact. So the number one best unit to put it on is Techies. If you can put it on Techies, then when he puts his bomb, he'll always put the bomb behind him, right? So if it's behind enemy lines and the bomb is behind enemy lines, then it's just going to hit everything. So usually it's best on the techies. You can also put it on Tidehunter and Axe, uh, and you can actually slam some people, get the ultis off faster. Really strong against mages because mages like to hide in the back line, so you can teleport right in front of them and then just taunt them or stun them. It's really good. Generally speaking, Blink Dagger has a, has a power level of 0 to 5 because if you do not have a Blink Dagger user that is absolutely garbage so they'll just equip this on any random person right but once again if you equip on a specific unit you can actually win the game of it you can it's actually 5 to 5 if you can actually put it on like a tide hunter if your opponent's running mages like super super good next up we got vanguard vanguard uh adds some health adds some health regen and the most importantly though it has a 50% chance to block 50 damage. That's that's pretty huge. And this is on auto attacks, right? Uh, it's interesting to note that Stealth Shield has... Stealth Shield does not stack. And Vanguard has diminishing returns. So, once again, if you have two Vanguards, uh, they each have a 50% chance to block something. And if they both work at the same time, you do not get the benefit, right? You do not get double... You do not get double Vanguard blocks. So, uh, make sure you do not put the Vanguard on the same unit. Because that's... That, that doesn't work out as well as you want it to. Uh, and Stealth Shield does not stack with reasons we're going to talk about later. But this is really good on your front line. You do not want to put this on your back line. Uh, Timbersaw is probably the best character to put it on. But you can also put it on Doom. Uh, you know, he, he does a lot of damage. So if, if you put it on Doom, he can survive longer. You can put, also put a Lycan because Lycan's ulti, you know, increases his health. So you want to let him live longer so that he can ult, uh, ult a little bit faster. That guy is usually very, very solid item to kill. So it's a three out of five. Perseverance. Uh, Perseverance is, uh, you know, it has uh, some HP regen and some mana regen on, on attack. Uh, it's mainly used to build Refresher Orb or Battle Fury. By itself, it's not really that important, but it is best on utility heroes. Um, heroes that can actually use both Refresher Orb or Battle Fury are the best targets for it. So we're gonna we're gonna see, um, you know, Kanka being one of the best Perseverance unit uh, stuff because Kanka can both use the Refresher Orb and can use the Battle Fury, right? So it's actually the perfect target. But you can usually just put this on any utility hero. So like you can put it on Medusa, you can put it on like, you know, Enigma, any unit that you want to ult faster and also takes a little bit of damage, you, it, this is actually just fine. Two out of five, not too powerful, not too weak. Once again, the main the main point of combining a Perseverance is because you want a Refresher over Battle Fury. Because the when you combine these two items, you actually do not get a bonus. Ring of Regen is 10 HP. Void Stone is 100% mana. You do not get a bonus. So if you can make a Vanguard instead with the Ring of Health, you should probably do that instead. All right. Always to the Refresher Orb, one of the most busted items in the game. You get the sum of the parts. You get 20 HP per second. You get 20% mana on attack. So it's basically two Perseverance or it's basically two Ring of Health and two Void Stones. You basically don't get a bonus of that. However, most importantly, you get to refresh your ultimate on cats each fight, which is absolutely ridiculous on units with global ultis, right? Like Medusa, Tide, and Conker. Man, Medusa is definitely the best target for this. When Medusa ultis, she stuns everybody, and then she's going to ulti again. The ultis are separate, so that... How, how, how do you put this? When your opponent is stunned for the first one, and you're applying the second one on top of it, they just get perma-stunned, right? So it's actually insane on Medusa. And it's not just Medusa, right? It's insane on Tide. Have you ever have you ever got Ravaged twice? Oh, it does not feel good. And then Double Boat is uh, works really, really well too. Five out of five power level. Insane. Refresher Orb. Like, it, you just get it. You're probably going to win the game. Make sure you put it on one of these units if you can. If you have a Refresher Orb on a bad unit, you might want to actually just sell it and put it on a good unit ridiculous uh it's also interesting to note that it does work on lone druid and lycan uh if you if you if you summon two bears or if you transform twice as lycan you actually get the bonuses you, you, you can actually get two bears you can actually get four wolves and you also get the double health bonus on lycan a little bit different from dota but uh just make sure that you uh have that option next up the other one is battle fury uh battle fury gives you increased attack uh, gives you the Perseverance upgrades, and most importantly, it gives you the plus 50% cleave 
uh, which is half your damage on t upwards to two spaces. Insane. Insane. You basically make any unit a Dragonite. Uh, the two-star Dragonite, right? Because Dragon Dragonite gives 50% cleave, and this effectively does that. So it only works on melee, so you cannot give it to ranged. So the it's best on Doom, by far. It's insane on Doom, right? He can actually use every single one of these stats, and he does insane amounts of damage, so you just cleave and you just kill everything. Uh, it's also pretty good on CK, and it's also pretty good on uh, PA as well. Uh, if you get Battle Fury, you just win the game. Like, it's actually 5 to 5. Sometimes you're a bit sad where you can't make Battle Fury work because you have a team of all ranged units. Uh, in that case, you probably want to split this up. But if you do, oh my god, this is just insane. You should watch my video on uh, on one of my dooms, just Battle Fury and just destroying my entire enemy team. It's insane. Next up, we've got uh, Moonshard. Uh, Moonshot comes from double hyperstone. Uh, you get 70 attack speed, so you get an increase of 10 attack speed. It's actually not that good to make Moonshard uh, because you only get a 10 attack speed bonus, uh, which is kind of basically like a quarter staff. Usually, you want to make the other hyperstone um, uh, items instead, but hey, sometimes you can't you can't choose what you get, right? So if you happen to get two hyperstones and you do want to have one of these carries like Dragonite, Troll, or uh, Terror Blade, then just equip it, right? So Moonshot's power level is very low, uh, 2 out of 5. Uh, you do not want to make this unless, you know, you just just get an insane surplus of hyperstones. Next up, we've got Mom. Uh, Mom is very easy to make. You can actually make this in the first three rounds because it's, uh, its components are Quarter Staff and Massive Madness, uh, uh, and Morbid Mask, right? So it gives 40 attack speed, which is ridiculous, 10% lifesteal, but it silences its user. However, the silence has no effect on passive. So if you put it on a unit that has um, that has no cast, like no ulti, then it's really good. So Luna, very nice. You can put it on a anti mage. You can put it on Drow. You can put it on Troll Warlord. Uh, these units make are really really good with massive madness um, because you know they don't cast their pass. They don't cast their passives. It's always on. You can also on a pinch put it on units that don't have a good alt. So for example, you could put on Tiny, you can put it on Sniper, you can put it on Doom. Uh, Doom's ult is really good, but Doom does shit tons of damage, and uh, Master Madness actually amplifies that a lot. So there's more units you can use for Master Madness, uh, and dude, the power level of this is insane. It's actually insane, right? Uh, Luna attacking faster is insane. AM attacking faster is just ridiculous, so always make bomb. Probably are not going to use quarter staff and more mass for any other reason anyway, so just just make them all. Monkey King Bar is the other uh, item that you can use quarter staff on. Uh, very hard to build, insanely hard to build, but for your troubles, you get plus 80 attack, plus 10% attack speed, and you also pierce evasion. So this is godlike against, you know, elves, and um, this is generally like a very high... It's a freaking 80 attack, okay? 80 attack is a freaking button. So, put it on your carry, put it on a unit that can ult fast, 4 to 5, super powerful, super powerful item that you should try and always try and get, and um, yeah, just put it on your carry and win the game. Next up, we've got Maelstrom. Maelstrom, it gives 25 attack and a 25% chance to chain lightning, uh, which is 100 damage to 3 targets, which is basically 300 damage, 25% uh, of the time, so it gives you 75 attack. Uh, on each auto attack, which is insane. So Maelstrom is a very, very powerful item. Uh, you want to put it on units that can generally make use of this, right? So Troll already attacks really fast, so you can proc it faster. TA lives a long time, so you can proc it more. And Wind Ranger has a very high attack speed, so you can proc it more. Uh, Maelstrom is very, very powerful, 3 out of 5. And most importantly, it builds Majonir, which is even more insane, because it you get even, uh, oh, uh, Ed. Whoops, I forgot to change this, lol. But no, it gives you even more uh, damage and attack speed. And it gives a 25% chance again to chain lightning 200 damage to 5 targets. Okay, that's insane. That's 1000 damage 25% of the time. So it's plus 250 damage on each attack. So same thing. Same heroes. Majoni is 5 out of 5. You get Majoni, you basically win. You can even put this on any carry, like a Doom, or like a, you know, you can put this on SF, you can put this on Medusa. Anybody who can just attack fast and live long, it's a good target for Majoni. Next up, we have Kaya. Kaya is the, um, 
it is the combination of rope and staff, and it gives negative 100% magic resistance target. My goodness, this actually makes it so that your opponent takes double damage from spells. You get a free six mage combo on a single unit, which is just utterly ridiculous. You want to put this on, you know, obviously mages because you want to be a mage build, right? So you put this on Razor, you put this on Quap, and then when they ulti, they actually work immediately, right? So that's actually insane. It's actually secretly good on CM, on Crystal Maiden, because no, Crystal Maiden doesn't do damage, but she usually lives until the end of the fight, right? You usually put Crystal Maiden in the back, so when she auto attacks, she applies the debuff, and then your other mages can do the work. So putting, um, you know, it, it, by the way, you can... For these items, you can always split them apart, right? So robe and staff, you can also equip on these units. So if you have a staff and you want to put it on CM, that's completely fine, uh, because um, because she lives till the end anyways. So this this is gonna basically have a hundred percent uptime. Uh, other units that are good at this, you know, Puck is good. Uh, you know, and, and it's Lich is good. Basically, any unit that can deal magic damage is good because they can amplify their own spell, right? The final unit that's really really good on with uh, these magic resist items is Juggernaut. Juggernaut is insane with this because not only does Juggernaut does um, spin damage, the spin does magic damage, he also auto attacks during his spin, right? His auto attack is zero damage during spin, but still, he still auto attacks. So it's really, really good. I equip these items on Juggernaut all the time. So uh, make sure that um, Juggernaut is also kind of like a mage in that sense. Uh, Kaya is a 3 out of 5. It's actually pretty strong. Plus, you're also not going to really use this on anything else, right? So, uh, build your Kayas. Next up, we've got Hood of Defiance, which is the opposite of Kaya. It gives uh, magic resist instead. So, it gives basically the combined uh, HP of this, and it gives you an extra cloak on top of it. So, where you want to put magic resist items, generally speaking? Uh, well, you want to, like, like I said, you want to put them on squishies. So, and, and you want to put, put them with things that usually live a long time. So squishies include SF and Medusa. Uh, you, you want them to get their ults off or deal as much damage as they can. And you don't want them to just get owned by Razor 2. Dude, Razor 2 one shots SF, right? So if you have a single cloak you don't want to put on, put it on the SF and it, it won't die randomly to just random AoE damage. Probably the best on Necro. Because Necro could use the HP gain. Necro doesn't want to get uh, you know magic resist down. And the longer your Necro lives, the more you can death pulse. Hood is usually a little bit uh, low power level. If the Ring of Health can make something better, like a Vanguard, you probably want to do that instead. But you know, sometimes you, you like like I said with items, you can't choose what you get. So if you if you if you make a hood, just just make it. It's it's actually fine. But the power level is not too high. Next up, we've got Heart. Uh, Heart gives 1,000 HP and plus 1% HP every 2 seconds. You're not going to get Heart. Let's be honest. This is this item just does not happen. Uh, obviously, it's good on your tanks, but let's be honest. You're, you're never getting Heart. I, I have never even seen a Heart in my game before. So let's just forget about it. And if you get Heart, then it, yeah, good for you, GG. Yeah, yeah you're pretty, pretty much going to win the game. <laughs> Next up, we have Divine Rapier. Same thing. I actually have seen a Divine Rapier in one of my games before. Uh, like, uh, I actually, I think I equipped it on a Lich <laughs> because I want him to ulti really, really fast. So you can actually do that too. But once again, very good idol on your carries. If five out of five, you can just win the game after you get a Rapier. Yeah, it's just, that, that, that's just game over. So this item, we have Diesel. Diesel is actually an insane item. You have plus 30 attack damage and you apply a negative 15 armor to the target you're hitting. Which means that your target is going to hit so hard. And because you apply it to your target, your whole team can benefit from that, right? If you actually position your team such that your all, all your units are attacking the single unit that is, gets dieseled, it's just going to melt, right? So an insane item, 4 out of 5, super pog. Uh, if you put it on a unit that can already deal damage, then you just double dip, right? Diesel is insane. Next up we have uh, Dagon. Uh, Dagon is, uh, you know, is is a burst damage. You basically give a unit a Lina ulti, and um, you also get the same 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 bonuses as this. So you can give them ma magic resist, and you also get extra mana. So it's good on units that don't need to auto attack. 
Because when you're casting Dagon, you actually lose one auto attack. Uh, so you want to put this on stuff like Razor, Necro, and uh, Vino, uh, units that don't really care about auto attacking as much and can also apply the magic debuff quite well. Uh, it's important to note that whenever you can upgrade Dagon, you need to you need to upgrade it. Because the every time you upgrade it, you increase its damage by 100 and you decrease its cooldown by 3 seconds. So you make it that much more likely to dig on twice in the fight. If you dig on twice in the fight, I, I just don't see how you can lose. Like, that's just so much insane damage. You get an extra Lina on top of all your units. So always upgrade your Dagon. So Dagon, it really depends on Dagon. The level one, Dagon is like two out of five. It's okay. It's not like backbreaking or whatnot, but the more you upgrade it, the more insane it gets. Scythe of Vice is a sheepstick. You're never gonna get this, okay? Let's be honest. You're never ever gonna get this item. I've only seen this once ever in my hundreds of games. Maybe like, I, I, I honestly, I think I played thousands of games now already, but you're never gonna see this. So, uh, 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 who cares? Like you're shaping your target, it doesn't really matter who you put it on, okay? It's an instant shape. Just put it on a unit that can use all of these stats. I mean, these stats are very varied anyways. It, 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 uh, just put it on everybody, man. Next up, we've got Crystallis. Uh, Crix is actually a very weird item because um, the components actually give less bang for your buck, right? So blades give plus 10 damage. Um, broadsword gives plus 20 damage. So combined, they give 30 damage, but then when you make crits, you only get 15 attack. So you actually get less damage. You get a crit though. The crit is 15% uh, crit chance for a 1.5x damage. So you get 50% extra damage 15% of the time, which is actually quite low, right? If you think about it, that's actually just a 7.5% uh, uh, increase in damage. So it's actually very bad. Uh, it's actually trying to scam you. You do not want to make crits, Unless you can make the other unit that needs the cricks, which is the dailyus, but we'll talk about that later. If you don't think you're gonna make cricks, you should actually split this item. You should actually. This is one of the items I actually do not recommend you do, un unless they buff it. Okay? Unless they buff it to plus thirty attack, then it's actually worth it. But for what is for what it stands, you actually put these two items in separate parts, right? Because the sum of is actually bad, and of course, put it on one of your, um, you know. Auto detectors. But the Daedalus is actually really good. So the Daedalus, um, it's actually plus 40 attack. Whoops, my bad. I forgot to change this. Uh, plus 40 attack. And you get a 10% chance to crit for four times damage. The crit is actually really, really good. The crit, crit percent chance is actually lower than crits, which is kind of weird. But dude, if if you if you crit with the Daedalus, you actually delete a unit immediately. So don't think of this as 4x damage. Think of this as a plus 10% chance to immediately kill your opponent, right? That's really, really good. So the deal is insane. Ch try and make this if you can. And Demon Edge with Crix is not that difficult. So uh, yeah, make it, dude. Next up, we have Blade Mail. Blade Mail gives armor and attack, and it also uh, duplicates. 20% of damage back to the attacker. It, it works on any damage, by the way. So if a Lina blade ma attacks a blade mail, then the blade mail actually deals the 20% uh, Laguna blade back at the Lina, which is good. It's good on your tanks. Wow, what a surprise, right? Uh, you want to stack as much effective HP as possible on a blade mail target. So if you have a blade mail on an axe, on a, on a treant or a timber, you want to put every single defensive item on it. Put all the cloaks, put all the uh, chain mails, put all the vitality boosters, just stack that guy up because he is gonna do so well, right? This is gonna be insane. And of course, if you have healing in your team, then blade mail just gets better. So yeah, uh, blade mail is pretty bad in the face side, but if you can make an insane tank, like a timber three with blade mail is ridiculous. So uh, just just keep that in mind, it's actually pretty good. Uh, why the power level is also two out of five is because you are now sacrificing damage item on a unit that doesn't really like it, right? Remember when we said before that damage items, you want to either put it on your um, melee carry DPS, uh, not not melee carry, just just your, just a DPSer, or you want to use it on a person who can ult fast. Well, if you sacrifice a broadsword of a blade mail, you actually lose that functionality. So just make sure that you don't blindly just make a blade mail every time you have these components. Next up, we've got AC. 
Oh god, AC is just okay. Let's just it's 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 six out of five. Okay, like it is the best item in the entire game. Like if you see an AC in the other team, you lose. Okay, you just you just auto lose. Like this this item is just like nigh unbeatable. Right? If your opponent has any reasonable team and they get AC, it's just GG. Why? Well, first of all, it gives an aura for plus ten armor and plus fifteen percent attack speed for allies. You know, it's basically right beside it. So it's a one space grid, right? Not only that, it also gives negative armor and negative attack speed for enemies. Like, that's just... What is this? Like, what is this item? This item is stupid because 10 armor... Remember, 10 armor is 60% health. You're giving plus 60% health to, all, to yourself, to the holder, because the holder works too, and to all your um, allies. And you also reduce about 60% health on all your enemies. And that's only counting the armor. We're not even have we're not even factoring the attack speed. This is one of the best items in the game. You always make AC if you can, right? You you, you just just delete everything, make AC, and just just be happy on it. And obviously it's really good on the melee character, right? Uh these characters are really good on just just put on the melee character, it'll be fine. But oh my god, AC just wins you the game. I have never lost the game. Where I've built AC. I've never lost the game. It, it, it just never happened before. I, I think I've got AC like probably close to like 10 games by now. I've won every single one. You just can't, you can't, you cannot lose with this item. Just, you can it cannot. All right. So those are all the completed items. Uh, hopefully that gives you a sense of what items are, are good and what items are bad and where you want to equip them. Uh, finally, we have three more topics to cover before we end this um, item. It's just to help you understand items a little bit more. Uh, first of all, what items stack and what items don't stack. I get asked this all the time, and I see players actually mess this up all the time. So if you actually can split your items well, then you get a bonus. So first of all, base stats increase. These always stack. And base stats increase means, you know, you're, up, you're, you're, you're upgrading your hero's statistics, such as giving them more damage, you know, giving them more attack speed. These are base stats. They always work, right? You can put as many blades and as many attack speed items on your unit. They always be fine. Uh, HP. HP always stacks. Uh, armor, like we discussed before, stacks. Uh, magic resist also stacks. So anything that upgrades base stats, always good, okay? What does not stack? On hit effects do not stack. Uh, when you have Blightstone and you have two Blightstones on the same unit, it can only apply one Blightstone debuff on your enemy because they're unique, right? Uh, unit can either be under the effects of Blightstone or it can be under the effects of not Blightstone, right? It, it cannot have double Blightstone, triple Blightstone. So when you have Blightstone, make sure you spread it apart. Uh, same thing with uh, this the Magic Resist debuff that's also on hit. Same thing with... Um, you know, a mana gain. Uh, when a unit has a void stone, it gets a hundred percent mana regen. But if it's two, it doesn't get two hundred percent mana regen because a unit either has void stone or it doesn't have void stone, right? So this also is the same thing of crown and stuff like that. So on effects do not stack. Life steal is a it's a, a kind of category by itself. It does stack. So more mass stacks fully. Uh, procs uh, like you know maelstrom and vanguard like we said before they do stack. But they have diminishing returns. So for, for Vanguard specifically, you do want to not put Vanguard on, two, uh, on uh, the same unit, right? When you have two Vanguards, you want to spread it out. Maelstrom and Majonia, however, it's up to debate. Because if you put two Maelstroms on the same unit, sure, it has diminishing returns. But the problem is, the Maelstrom is probably really good on that unit anyways, right? Like... This still gives attack damage, and this still gives uh, attack speed. So you probably still want to just put the Maelstrom on the same unit, because you get the other benefits. And if that unit, like, survives a long time, like a Troll Warlord or whatever, it probably wants it anyways. So Maelstrom is kind of like the weird exception. Just know that if you split your Maelstroms, like you put one on Troll and put one on Medusa, it might actually be better. But uh, sometimes you don't get a choice, which is fine. And finally, there is one, you, there's one item that is a little bit uh, weird which we talked about before a little bit, and it's Stealth Shield. Uh, Stealth Shield does not stack, which is a bit weird, because Stealth Shield has a 100% chance to block 10 damage in uh, auto chest. Uh, if you have two Stealth Shields, you do not, you do not get 200% chance, okay? You either block an attack or you don't block an attack. So if you have multiple Stealth Shields, make sure you spread them out. They uh, Put them around the same unit, it doesn't do anything. And now we have uh, best equip situations. Uh, when do you want to equip uh, your, your heroes? Well, there's three 
very important um, ideas when it comes to equipping your uh, your units. First one is if the unit can use the completed item anyways, uh, you should put put it on. All right, so like we said, Perseverance on Conquer is actually, Conquer is actually the best unit to put Perseverance in because not only does can he use the HP gain, not only can he use the mana gain, but he can also use both Battle Fury and Refresher Orb, right? So if you have an item that can advance tiers and it's also good on the unit as is, that's where you want to put it on. SF also has a lot of these uh, units, right? Uh, uh, items, right? Such as like attack damage, right? Attack damage is really good on SF. Uh, magic resist is really good on SF, stuff like that. Okay, so that's the first idea. If the unit can use the completed item anyways, put it on it. The second idea for items. If the item augments a unit super effectively, okay? Um, what that means is if you put a Mass of Madness on a Luna, you basically make Luna insane. So if you are building, I don't know, if you're building like warriors, for example, and then suddenly you get a Mass of Madness completed at round 10, you should try and get a Luna, right? Like if you get offered Luna, you should try and take it because you have a freaking mom now, right? So it's it's going to be insane. Same thing with Jug. Uh, if you get like a Kaya, uh, you know, Jug suddenly becomes a pretty high pick. Uh, Vino is actually a very good example for this too. If you get a Voidstone and you see a Vino, then maybe you want to pick the Vino up because Vino is insane with Voidstone. So if an item augments a unit very, very well, it makes it go in go from normal to insane, you should try and buy that unit and equip that uh, item on that unit. Because it also loops on to the third point of items is if the unit is temporary, and not in the final roster, you should put items on it regardless. So the two best examples of this uh, phenomenon is Anti-Mage and TA. Usually these units don't make your final roster. They're really good at mid game, but if you're not doing the synergy for these units, or if you're not making like uh, three star AM or stuff, you know, stuff like that, then they kind of drop off, right? So if that's the case, why not just put all your items on a unit that you're going to sell later on just to improve your mid-game even more, right? So stack up your AM, stack up that TA, you know, if you have an off item like, uh, you know, like SF or even like stuff like Luna, for example, that don't make your build at late game, just dump all your items on it. It's better to use an item rather than put it on your courier because if you have it on your courier, you can't, it's the same as not having the item at all, right? So. Try and always put your items on one of these situations. And if you really can't figure it out where you want to put it on, then sure you can hold it. Because you know, sometimes you don't want to misquip, right? Like you can't you can't unequip items when you uh unless you sell the unit, which is a pretty big cost. But just so you know, if you're smart with these three um three these three points, you can make items work really, really well. Okay, let's do a little exercise. Okay. We're gonna do some item examples. And we're gonna test your knowledge on if you actually understood uh, today's um, today's guide uh, or not. Okay. So first of all, with axe, with stout shield, two vanguards, vitality booster, cloak, and hood. So the question is, with all these item examples, is this good on axe? And what items stack and what items don't stack? You know, like is this good? Uh, I guess I'll give you guys a little while to figure it out. Uh, and uh, time's up. All right, so let's go ahead and analyze those. So this is not the best build for Axe because there are a few items that did, did, did not really stack, dude. First of all, two Vanguards are a big a big no-no because, you know, they don't stack. Uh, they stack with diminishing returns. And usually there's another unit that you probably want to save instead, right? And why the heck is this Stealth Shield here? If the Vanguard blocks, it overwrites the Stealth Shield because the Vanguard blocks more damage, right? So this Stealth Shield is effectively useless, all right? The Vid Boost is fine. And the Cloak and a uh, Hood is actually fine. So these are actually okay because once again, Magic Resist does stack. And giving more um, health on Axe when you have a lot of Magic Resist is actually a big, a, a big plus. So that's good. But then this is not good. So the first row is not good. The second row is really good. Next one. We have Alina with Kaya, Staff, Double Voidstone, and Double Crown. So let's go ahead and think about this. What items are good here and what items are bad here? 
is this Lena smart? For okay, so this Lena is actually a pretty big dum dum. Okay, this Lena is probably a pawn player because these crowns and these void stones do not stack. So effectively, this Lena wasted these items. So there's effectively only four items. Okay. Uh, however, this 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 Lena did do one thing right. It's Kaya and Staff. These two items actually do stack because they apply separate magic resist debuffs, right? Uh, because this this applies negative 100%, this applies negative 20%. Because they're separate debuffs, they actually do stack, which is interesting. And of course, chat is telling me now that th these two items are going to combine into Dagon, which, yes, it is true. Well, that is true. Imagine this is the final round. Imagine you're both at 1% and you just equip the item. Yeah, that 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 that's fine. Okay, this is this is fine. This example is basically to show you. I made this example basically to show you that this and this they do stack. Okay, that's basically the knowledge you want to gain here. All right, and finally, last example we have Dragonite with Majonir, Maelstrom, <laughs> Diesel, a Blightstone, and double the Daedalus. Is this is this Dragonite? Doing good or not? <laughs> All right. The answer to this is yes. This dragon is insane. Note that there is diminishing returns of this and this, and there's also diminishing returns of this and this. Uh, these two stack f fine, right? These two are <laughs> these two stack really well because this is negative fifteen and this is negative three, so they the different people, so they work, but. Why you want to put all these things is because if you have a Dragonite with these items, this is probably a carry, and you're probably going to win the game. <laughs> so yes, this is the right equip, and this Dragonite is good. So, yep, this is the, this is the correct build. Alright, so hopefully you learned something in my item and statistics and item guide, and uh, hopefully you can make uh, better use of your items and have a better understanding on how armor and magic resist and stuff like that works. Uh, yeah, uh, once again, you should check out my other guides that are also on uh, the YouTube. And uh, thanks for watching. And let me know which guide you want me to pursue next. Because, uh, you know, I think I did all the basic ones. This, is a, this was a pretty advanced one. So if you watched um, this for the whole time, then congrats. Uh, that's a lot of knowledge, especially if you don't um, really know a lot about these statistics things. So, good job! You can now be a queen, just like me.